We're here at AOPA Summit 2009 looking at the aircraft on static display and one of the things that caught our eye was called the Kestrel. We're here to talk with uh, Adrian Norris who is the Director of Business Development for Farnborough Aircraft about this aircraft. Uh, Adrian, first of all, thanks for taking some time for our listeners and tell us about Farnborough Aircraft. Oh, uh, Farnborough Aircraft is a British company uh, which was, has been around for about 10 years now. It was founded uh, in 1998 with the express aim of developing the optimum air taxi, six-seat turboprop air taxi. And over the years, that's uh, developed slightly into the aircraft that you see behind you. Uh, the company had a, a joint venture in 2003 to 2005 with Epic Aircraft. And we did a lot of aerodynamic work on the wing. So this wing, which you can see on the airplane behind you, uh, was developed by Farnborough and is used on the Epic LT uh, and on this aircraft. But despite the similarity in looks between the two airplanes, the Kestrel is a substantially larger aircraft than the Epic and designed only to be a certified airplane and not to be an amateur built. Now, there were some people who said that uh, as neat and as sexy and as good performing as some of the Epic aircraft were, they were destined for issues when it came to the certification process itself. What is different about this aircraft in that regard? Well, it's a larger aircraft, uh, and we're going to make some changes for certification. The main issue really is the power and the size, so we're going to be flat rating our engine down to 1,000 horsepower, uh, which will make it a, a much more manageable aeroplane, and will deal with some of the challenges for certification that would be faced with the 1,200 horsepower engine currently fitted. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. In this day and age, it's rare to see a project like this going forward. I mean, we, over the past few years, we've seen lots of very light jets and, and even some, uh, some turboprop aircraft. And, and again, as you mentioned, the things that Epic was trying to do uh, come up to a certain point and fail. What is it about this aircraft going forward that makes it viable? Uh, first of all, we think that we've got a, a niche in the market which is uh, an attractive one. It's the niche that a lot of the VLJs were targeting, but uh, we believe strongly that the single-engine turboprop solution offers a better answer to many people for a, a combination of operating economics, ease of use and flexibility and efficiency. We're at our most uh, efficient altitude in the mid-20s, which is where the VLJs were going to be stuck and burning a lot of fuel. We've tried not to innovate too much, so we, we have innovative aerodynamics, but the, the systems, the engine is tried and tested. The avionics that we're going to use are going to be standard. We don't want to reinvent too many new wheels if we can avoid it. We're using carbon fiber technology, which has been certified, it exists in other Part 23 certified airplanes. You can see that we're on the stand with Liberty, uh, who have been through this process with their XL2 using exactly the same composites as us and we've, we've been talking with them for a year exchanging some technical information and some financial information and we believe that uh, together working with an established partner we can we can build a, a very viable product and bring it to market at an acceptable uh, cost which will allow us to make some money afterwards. Now the other big question when you try to build an airplane these days or, or develop a new airplane is is funding. It's not a an insignificant financial process to get to Part 23 certification. Uh, how are you guys fixed in that regard? We've spent uh, over $20 million uh, already to date to d develop the Kestrel uh, behind you and we're currently privately funded from the UK. We're able to continue like that but we're looking to get additional funding working together with Liberty to build a proposal for additional funding not just for the certification but really more given everything that's happened in the industry over the last two years so that we can demonstrate to potential customers that we're a, a solid uh, company that's going to be here for the long term and it's going to be able to support the airplane in, in production. You mentioned before we got on camera here some uh, differences in the way these planes might be flown in the UK or in Europe versus here and part of that has to do with altitude. I think a lot of people have the assumption in the, in the states that they're going to buy a VLJ and fly at flight level 410 and, and that you say is not always practical in Europe. For this sort of aircraft, flying sectors of five, six hundred miles perhaps typically, uh, if you're going to climb up to 
flight level 410 at 300 knots. I think you're going to have a, some difficulties fitting in with the, the flow of traffic and the chances are you're going to be held down into the, into the mid-20s where we're efficient and that many of the jets just uh, can't be efficient. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. All right, now you base this thing at home on an 1800 foot grass strip. Tell us about these capabilities, because that's kind of interesting. Yeah, we're based at an airfield called Red Hill, where the shortest runway is uh, 600 meters, which is uh, 1800 feet. Uh, we have trailing link undercarriage, which gives very good rough field capability. And um, with the power of this airplane and the ability to use reverse uh, thrust on the prop after landing, uh, we can fill the tanks and fill the cabin and uh, get out of that field and straight up to 25,000 feet. There are a couple of other uh, single-engine turboprop aircraft uh, with similar number of seats and, and capabilities that are in that segment already. Tell us how you stack up around, say, the, the Pilatus PC-12 neighborhood. The Pilatus PC-12 is a, a substantially larger airplane. It's got uh, nine seats. It's going to be over a million dollars more expensive than the, the Kestrel and it cruises at 270 knots against a, a 340 knot cruise that we can offer. It's a different class of airplane, really. If you compare the Kestrel with the, the Sakata TBM 850, which is a, a, perhaps a more direct competitor, uh, with six seats, uh, similar pricing, we're offering a, a larger cabin, a private lavatory, similar capability, performance capability, slightly faster, uh, similar field capability, and we're aiming to do that at a lower cost. All right, I don't want to make you talk pie in the sky here, but let's talk about timetable. Do you have any, uh, let's just talk about aspirations, if not uh, firm commitments on when you want to bring this to market. Okay. Hey, uh, aspirations, we've worked with Liberty and we've worked with uh, other people to develop a very detailed plan for what's needed for certification. We're ready to freeze the design and start work on conformal prototypes. And if we're realistic, one that can't exclude the unknown disaster in, during the certification process that no one's thought of, but we think it will be a three-year process to certification. And you mentioned that you had an idea what the uh, market price would end up being. Where are you you're aiming that? We'll, we'll fix that firmly when we're closer to certification, but we're looking in the, in the region of $2.8 million. Well, I have to tell you, it's fun to see somebody who's got one that's moving forward. You've got a, a beautiful aircraft here that we're going to take a look at in more detail, and we thank you for taking some time out today. You're welcome. Thank you.